All right, so we're here for the next episode of My Hero. At this point, we are up to episode 46. Now, I, I just have to say, we are right on the precipice now of big time shit going down. So, uh, any anime only watchers, you know, who have not read the manga, 46 was a bit of a slower episode, obviously, you know, compared to uh, how, like, breakneck a lot of the last couple episodes were. But this episode is just set up, set up for <laughs> insanity coming. So, uh, do keep that in mind. You know, there uh, a, a couple important things happen in this episode uh, that will be paid off in a few episodes' time. So, the episode begins uh, with the conclusion of what happened at the end of last week's episode, where uh, Deku is kind of talking with the other students. Todoroki and Kirishima, they want to get a tracker from Momo, and they want to use that to uh, try and rescue Bakugo, even though they know that All Might, uh, the police, and probably other pro heroes will actually uh, already be going to the scene. But they don't want to just let, like, Bakugo be kidnapped and not, like, actively try and do something themselves. Uh, basically, all of the students of Class A are not down with it. They, like, they talk about it, they discuss it, but really only Kirishima and Todoroki are really with it. They're going to talk to Momo later, uh, and Deku, uh, like, it, it's clear, though, that Deku is probably going to uh, assist them. Uh, as all the students are leaving, because the doctor comes in and wants to give uh, Deku an exam, uh, Kirishima tells him, you know, meet us in front of the hospital. That's where, you know, we'll make the decision uh, later at night. And Ida actually does overhear this. Now, the doctor begins his examination. This is something that when I first was reading the manga, this was like, like, I hate this, but at the same time, I like it, right? So, we know that Deku, like, as he's gotten into a lot of these fights, a lot of these situations, right? Like, you know, when he was at USJ, uh, the fight against Todoroki, uh, when he, you know, was in the original exam with Uruka, all these times he's, like, maxed out his, you know, the power of uh, one for all, and it's kind of caused his arms and his body a lot of stress. Well, the doctor explains here, and you do get a glimpse of Deku's arm and how badly like, fucked up and scarred up it is now, that this time, like, Deku has had lots of injuries before, but this time his injuries were, like, insane beyond belief. And the doctor explains that, like, you know, normally the uh, human body will have, like, limiters, like, up to 80% that you could use of, like, your muscle, you know, your, your, your strength or power, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the doctor explains that during, like, a big-time crisis moment, like, you know, you could surpass that and use your full, like, potential. And then, you know, it does do a flashback at the same time to Deku, you know, using uh, one for all a million percent against muscular. So him doing that and using, like, full power, the doctor explains it's basically as though his uh, bones turned to firecrackers in his arm. So... Basically, the doctor explains that if you keep injuring your arms like this, you know, two or three more times, uh, you're going to get to a point where your arms, the joints in them will deteriorate so badly, you won't be able to use your arms moving forward. Now, Deku is discharged from the hospital. Like, he is healed. He's still, like, in pain. His body is stiff. But, like, for all intents and purposes, he's healed. It's just now he has, like, you know, that permanent damage in his arms. Uh, the doctor does say that, you know, healing begins in the mind. You should stay positive. And he hands uh, Deku a letter from a visitor that Deku had. And it is actually a letter that was written by Koda, who basically explains, you know, sorry for punching you in the balls. <laughs> And thanks for saving me, even though you barely know me. So obviously, like Deku, you know, he went to that crazy situation to save Koda, having to fight Muscular, who's a ridiculously strong villain, but like he was able to accomplish it. He did save Koda, even at the cost of these significant injuries. So seeing that, like, you know, you do kind of get a final shot of Deku's resolve. Then he calls uh, his mother on the phone, talks to her, and heads out to go meet Kirishima and Todoroki. Now, after this, we see a very good scene. We see Endeavor receives a call, the number two hero. We see Best Genus receives a call, 
the number four hero. We see the number five hero, Edshot, running off. And we see the number ten hero, Gang Orca. We also see Kamui Woods, Mount Lady, Gran Torino, and then uh, the Tiger dude, uh, Tiger from the Pussycats, all heading off. So this will be the squad that will be kind of... Uh, going in to try and rescue Bakugo, and then of course we already know that All Might was called in uh, by the police as well, so they're going to have a powerful team to try and actually save Bakugo. Now, it cuts back to the hospital, Uh, Momo and Deku come out, they're ready to go ahead and go try and see if they could save Bakugo, Momo doesn't want to do it, but she says she trusts Todoroki, Ida having overheard Hiroshima telling Deku about their plan, does come and confront Deku, and he brings up, you know, how, like, reckless he was after the injuries he saw that his brother received from Stain, and how, like, he, you know, Todoroki and Deku, like, their heroic actions, like, you know, they were trying to save Native and Ida from Stain, and, like, you know, Ida was very uh, critical of himself for being, like, thinking about revenge and stuff, and and he, he tries to tell him, like, We can't, like, do another situation like that. But basically, like, Deku has such strong resolve that he does kind of convince Ida to at least uh, attempt it. Now, Ida agrees that he will go along with them to try and make sure that they don't try and rescue Bakugo without getting violent, without actually engaging in combat. And that's, that's the thing that Todoroki says. Like, their plan is they want to try and rescue Bakugo without actually fighting with the villains. It's just a rescue mission, not necessarily going there to fight. But we do see Momo kind of think to herself that, like, objectively, that's not realistic. Like, they're not they're not going to sneak in, get Bakugo out of there, and then the villains are going to be like, oh, whoa, shucks, guys, they got us. So clearly that's not going to be what happens. Now, we get a shot of all of the heroes that were, pre- like I previously mentioned, lining up in the police headquarters, preparing to actually engage on this raid. At that point, it switches over, and we see Deku and the others. uh, They've arrived in the city uh, where the uh, villain, the Nomu, that Momo had put the tracker in, like, in what city that their, like, base is uh, located at. Now, the students, it's uh, Todoroki, Ida, Kirishima, Deku, and Momo. They get disguises on because, you know... They talk about how the villains, like, they had, like, an intense listing of all of the different heroes. Like, they know their quirks, they know their faces, their names, all of that. A big reason for this was the sports festival uh, in the last season. So they get these disguises on, and as they leave, they see on the TV there's actually a press conference going on where uh, Aizawa and Vlad King and Nezu are being kind of interrogated by the press. There's a press conference, and we see how the public opinion has sort of shifted against UA, and all three of them are under, like, harsh criticism during this press conference. It also does cut to the League of Villains watching the same press conference, and we see Shigaraki kind of goes on this long speech about how unjust, you know, the Hero Society is, how, like, you know, they're not perfect. Like, they make one little mistake, and all of a sudden, all of the masses turn against them, not even listening to them, even though the heroes, like, they're trying to do what's in best interest for, like, all the citizens, but the citizens turn on them over one, you know, small little mistake, right, and Shigaraki's telling all this to Bakugo, basically trying to win him over to try, trying to sway him, given this long speech, and we can see that Shigaraki really has grown up from the way he was before, like, like, he's very calculating and cool, like, in this sort of analysis that he gives to Bakugo. And we see Spinner uh, also name drop Stain as well, that, like, you know, these heroes who are getting money and glory in exchange for rescuing people, they're not actually even heroes at all anymore. And what they want to do is they want to get Bakugo to join their side and kind of fix society, is what Shigaraki says. Now, (laughs) a lot of people... A lot of people really, I guess, change their mind about Bakugo. They really like Bakugo. There's a a segment of people who really love what Bakugo does here, right? They say, oh, it's incredible character growth. Now, I will say, it is cool. It's very cool how they kind of, 
you know, this arc is very similar to, like, the Sasuke retrieval arc. You know, so, like, you know, we jokingly refer to it as, like, the Bakugo retrieval arc, right? And it does get kind of flipped on its head right here with what Bakugo does. But I, I do have to say, just Bakugo basically telling the villains, fuck you, uh, certainly does not kind of, you know, cover up all the bitchiness he's done, you know, up to this point in the series. Like, moving forward, like, I, I do hope we can get actual character development from Bakugo, where he's not such a piece of shit, like, going forward, like, to really, really develop him. Like, I, I hope we eventually get to some sort of fight where Deku and uh, Bakugo are, like, really fighting side by side. Some sort of scene like that, and Bakugo's not being, like, a little jealous fuckboy about it. So, Shigaraki, after finishing his speech, he tells Dabi, you know, go go free him, you know, we're scouting him, we want to talk to him as equals. Dabi has twice do it, because he knows that Bakugo is about to go off the handle. So, twice frees Bakugo, you know, undoes his restraints, and Shigaraki starts walking close, you know, spouting out his bullshit, and it is great, because Bakugo basically kicks twice in the face, and then creates an explosion right in Shigaraki's face, knocking the hand that he always has on his face off onto the floor. Now, we've seen how Shigaraki gets incredibly violent when the hand on his face gets uh, damaged or knocked around. Remember when Stain was there before, uh, that caused Shigaraki to get a little erratic. Now, Shigaraki looks down at the hand on the ground and says, Father, and the episode ends. Now, I gotta say, ending the episode right here is crazy, because, like, we, the (laughs) next, like, the next three or four episodes are going to be fucking insane. I don't know exactly how long it lasts, but literally, starting next week is, like, you know, if you're an anime-only watcher, you've heard people say, like, oh, can't wait for the big thing, the big thing is coming, well, the big thing officially starts at next week's episode. So, I hope y'all are ready. Uh, we got here. You know, it's cool. Bakugo had his nice little moment. You know, he explodes the explosion right in Shigaraki's face and says, Yeah, yeah, all your bullshit is cool, but nothing will ever be as cool as All Might when he wins. You can't take that away from me. That's what I want to be. All Might is the best. So, like, that is cool from Bakugo. But, like, it doesn't excuse all of his bitchiness. I'm sorry. Like, all the moments of him being a little bitch boy, I don't just go, Oh, well, he blew up uh, Shigaraki's face. Nice little explosion there. So, he all is forgiven. Like, no, bitch. I'm gonna need more than just this. But, that will end it for today. Next week, shit is gonna get crazy. Very fucking crazy.